Hey everybody, it's Future Inventions here, and um, my science fair project, which is right here, is, is colder ice harder? So my hypothesis is, I think that ice will have much smaller cracks when it is colder during the experiment. My theory is that ice will begin to form around the bottom and sides of the container first, because that is where heat is being drawn away from directly. Then these small ice crystals will float up to the top, since ice is less dense than water, and bond together. I think that since the ice crystals are already formed, it will be a weaker bond. Once enough of these ice crystals are formed and take up most of the container, the remaining water will quickly freeze. I think that the bonds between ice crystals will be stronger in cold temperatures, but will break apart before the bonds in the crystals themselves once the ice gets warmer. Okay, so I chose this experiment because I thought, I thought this experiment was interesting because I wanted to see if ice on sidewalks is harder to shovel off when the temperatures are colder. It recently snowed just before I chose this experiment, and the ice that was frozen on the picnic table inspired me to choose this because it was so hard to scrape off. I thought that if this experiment worked well and I got the result that colder ice is harder, I could tell people to shovel their sidewalks when the weather is warmer. I also chose this project because the way matter changes form fascinates me and I wanted to do a project on ice. Okay, so let's move down to the research. Um, sorry, my dog is in the way. Come on, Winnie. Come. Come on. Come on. Come this way. Oh boy, yeah. You can lay down right there. <laughs> okay, so, um, for my research, uh, this is what I wrote. <laughs> Winston, stop. Oh well. <laughs> we want to crack our eyes, so we need to know about tenacity and fracture. Tenacity, I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, is the point at which a material breaks. For example, it might take less force to break glass than plastic. This might come into effect in our experiment, but we are not measuring it at all. We are measuring fracture in a way, though. Fracture is how a mineral breaks, not under how much force it takes, like tenis tenacity tenacity, whatever. Some minerals have a jagged fracture and some have a slightly f th smooth fracture. Ice cracks when it fractures, and that crack is what we're testing. We're working with ice and freezing temperatures, so we need to know how things get cold and how water freezes. When things get cold, heat is drawn away from them because heat always moves to colder places. For example, if you pick up a snowball without gloves, your hand gets cold and the snowball starts to melt. The heat from your hand travels to the snowball, making your hand cold and the snowball warm enough so that it can melt. So we know why things get cold, but now we need to know how water freezes. Atoms and molecules are always moving, except at zero degrees Kelvin, which means that they have heat. Almost everything has heat and is moving, but a pot of boiling water has much faster atoms and molecules than ice because it is much hotter. When water reaches its boiling point, or its freezing point, it changes the state of matter. When water boils, its atoms and molecules move so fast that they spread apart and become much less dense, so they rise into a gaseous form. Gaseous. Whatever. When water freezes, the molecules slow enough to combine into a crystalline structure. The colder something gets, the less it moves, and the more brittle it becomes. Think about it. There's just one more little thing to add. Ice's atomic structure. How does that affect this test? Well, ice has many hexagons in its structure. This is a lot of open space, therefore the ice is less dense than water. This explains why ice cubes float and water expands when frozen. So that 
last paragraph there uh, actually ties in with uh, the theory on my hypothesis because I actually did find that um, online this uh, atomic structure and that is really the reason why ice floats and ice needs to float for my theory to be correct so um, now I'm going to read the materials and procedures so let's move over here there we go okay so for materials you need water a freezer down to negative 15 degrees celsius a plastic tub a few inches by a few inches at least as high as one inch with an open top a thermometer preferably preferably with a probe a nail, a hammer, mine was one pound, a ruler, a measuring tape, a roll of any kind of tape, and that's it. For procedure, uh, step one, make sure you have all the materials gathered. The first thing you will need to do is use the ruler to fill up your container with an inch of water. Measure the water on a flat surface at eye level for an accurate measurement. Step two, take the nail and hold it over the container of water so that the tip of the nail is touching the surface of the water. Make a mark on the wall behind your testing area at the same height as the top of the nail. Then take the ruler to the wall so that the zero mark on the ruler is on the mark you just made on the wall. Make sure that you are using the inches side. Step three, insert the thermometer probe that it's insert the thermometer probe of the thermometer itself into the water if it won't stay vertical tape it to the container then put the container with the thermometer and water inside the freezer let it freeze overnight uh, step four take the ice back out of the freezer put it on your testing area pull the nail vertically on top of the ice. Raise a hammer in your other hand until the flat metal part is at 5 inches on the ruler. Let the hammer drop onto the nail by loosening your grip slightly. Record the size of the crater by its dynamiter, bleh, diameter with the measuring tape from the end of the crack on one side to the end of the crack on the other. Now step 5 Repeat step 4 at negative 10 degrees Celsius, negative 5 degrees Celsius, and 0 degrees Celsius. Make sure to use a different spot on the ice each time and also record your results. So, um, that's it for the procedure. Now let's move down to variables. You can't really see that though. And you can see my dog again. Uh, I messed up a little bit, just a little bit on the procedure. I put of instead of or. Uh, for step three, it was supposed to be insert the thermometer probe or the thermometer itself into the water, not of. Okay, so for variables, the independent variable is negative 15 degrees Celsius, negative 10 degrees Celsius, negative 5 degrees Celsius, and 0 degrees Celsius. The dependent variable is the size of the crater or crack made by the nail. The constants is, uh, are the weight of the hammer, the amount of ice, and how high the hammer is released from. And there is no control. Um, also, here we, you can see, whoops, we have two pictures right there, right there, and right there, and here is a CD. Um, I recorded the whole experiment so you can be sure to see that. Then uh, over here is the data and observations and conclusion. And I'm not going to get to that yet because I want to leave it for uh, later. So guys, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I'll have a link for uh, part two in the video description when I get that out. So, bye.